Welcome back to another episode of T-10, everyone. T-10 is a show with 10-minute takes on the future of education and healthcare. And today I am joined by Neil Chagedny, who's Executive Director at Home Dialyzers United. Welcome to the show, Neil Chagedny. Good to have you. Great, and thank you so much. I really enjoy always chatting with you, Tim. And It really uh, is always good I'm, to connect. Yep. So I'm here today. I have been a solo home dialyzer for eight years. Um, I always find it ironic because I spent 20 years avoiding dialysis at all costs. I, it was never my intention to ever go on dialysis uh, for many reasons, which we'll discuss in a little bit. But the bottom line is when I crashed, and I, I it's kind of ironic, but... Uh, I didn't have the luxury of dying. <laughs> I had started taking care of my mom who was in her 90s with uh, dementia and I, I crashed and said you know, I have to fix something everything so I uh, and the doctor the nephrologist at the time after 20 years of, of really working on CKD uh, I this doctor who I had never met came to me in the hospital room and said you know what you're going to do home dialysis and I looked at her and said what's that and the rest is history so um, the bottom line was a few months later I felt too good I couldn't call hospice you know when I was back to normal life and so here I am today <laughs> I love it thank you for for sharing I know that that story is a common thread in your narrative and, and definitely what you're doing and leading at HDU and I want to I want to jump into that if we can. And now, this is the decade of home dialysis and HDU. I want to give you a chance to, to talk about your work, what you're leading there. And then, of course, I want to get into uh, what were those platforms that you talked about first a couple of years ago now. There's been a ton of excitement around kidney care in particular about the patient voice. I know you've had a big part of that, but let's start with kind of what, what does HDU do? What is your role with the organization and kind of what are you uh, what are you excited about in terms of the mission of HDU? So HDU began in about 2006 when um, home dialysis really became came on the forefront with the next stage dialysis machine. Uh, and at the time, several pa the new patients who started formed a group. Uh, it was very informal and it grew over the years until suddenly the uh, uh, president at the time uh, and founder uh, passed away, unfortunately, after surgery. And then it was a time of regrouping, which was just about the time that I crashed into dialysis. And so we both kind of merged uh, together. I had obviously no experience in dialysis in the kidney arena. I, I had spent 20 years avoiding it at all costs. Uh, but there I was at home doing dialysis. And of course, in the middle of the night, when you have questions, there's no answers. And you go on Facebook, and next thing you know, there's a group. And next thing I know, I'm on a board, and we're moving forward. So 2014, we did a complete reorganization. <laughs> and today, it, you know, it was all history. What was really exciting for us is that we've been working, talking, or presenting the message of home dialysis since 2006 and kind of talking to deaf ears. And here it is, 2019, and we all of a sudden get a presidential executive order. And that was exciting. But I got to tell you that when we walked out of the room, having been invited and sitting front row center, the one thing that our entire board said in unison was now our work has just begun uh, because when we put home dialysis in the forefront, which is what that executive order did, uh, we want 85% of patients moving home. We said we have to have a system, a support system in place to, to care for them, to take care of them, to get them home and keep them home. And that has been the issue. So at in 2020, we launched the Decade of Home Dialysis, which is to make sure that as we expand the base for home patients, that we also support them. We do not want to send people home to fail. I mean, it's bad enough there's kidney failure across the board. We don't want our home patients going home uh, without the support that they need, and that's going to be an individual. Excellent. And Neilcha, I think that last point is something that resonates and I've had so many conversations, and I know you have too, with nephrologists, with the organizations who are trying to support this new executive order, who are trying to help more patients discover and choose and to go through with the decision to, to choose home. One of your platforms, I believe, for this decade of home dialysis was around 
training and adequate support to make sure that patients were. You know, can you tie that into how your experience is as a patient and, and what was it like then and sort of what is it like now and, uh, and some of that, how have you seen the, the needle moving during this decade? So one of the things that's, that's critically important is the training of, the, of patients received to go home. Um, you have to think about the fact that once we are home and doing our home dialysis, we're essentially operating as a complete clinic with one and possibly two people. Some people have family support, care partners. Um, others, like myself, live alone and don't have anyone, which is fine. But you have to, everybody's going to need a different level of support, and they're also going to need it at different times during their life on dialysis. Um, so it's critical. And one of the things that we've worked for very hard, last year we launched legislation with NKF to uh, get home health care workers back in, uh, helping with dialysis in the home. Um, we think that this is critically important because as patients, uh, we occasionally accidents happen. You might come be home, coming home back from surgery. Uh, your partner might be ill or have an emergency, and you need help. And it, it's not always convenient or even feasible for a home patient to move back to the clinic for what they call respite care. Um, so we want to have home uh, health care or staff-assisted dialysis, as the legislation is called, available with limitations and restrictions to help these patients um, in place. Education is going to be key, and one of our platforms has been we cannot just teach the machine to the patient, which is what's happening. Um, they're, they're taught how to operate a machine. Well, you're home, you're all alone, and dialysis by its nature is, is not static. It's going to have many different like nuances and, and things that happen during a treatment. When you're in clinic, you don't notice that because the nurses just in text are fluttering about and you just aren't paying attention. At home, that's all you, the only person you're gonna rely on is yourself and or your care partner. You have to be taught not just the machine, but the nuances, the, the things that happen during dialysis. And, and I use the example, you have low blood pressure, um, drops if you're pulling too much fluid, so you're going to need to understand things that you can do to, to adapt to that. That's how a lot home dialyzers actually came about, was because patients were seeking answers. And so what we have a Facebook support group uh, that provides anecdotal information, things that have helped other people get through all of these issues, things that, you know, your fistula acts up, you have a, our alarms. Um, there, it, you cannot even begin to imagine all of the little things that ha go along in the home while you're doing your treatment. But it's okay because we're used to it. And, and we're, you know, if you are trained, if you understand that this is going to happen, it, it becomes a way of life and it, it's not so bad. But we can't send our patients home without understanding this, nor without the support that they need. <laughs> I appreciate the perspective, Nilcha. I think one thing that strikes me as amazing and impressive from the beginning of HTU is that sense of community, and especially with patients who do feel like they might be on their own doing this at home or with a care partner. Uh, having worked on that sense of community from 2006 and onwards, now with it becoming a little bit easier to build community and to connect people uh, beyond just Facebook groups, it is, has to be exciting in your role. Right? One piece I want to do and is, uh, is this training piece because even if, and this is from a lot of conversations we've had as well, even if we get training completely right and it is uh, something that we can do in a reasonable amount of time and patients feel confident in coming out of the back end of it and feel prepared, it's still a challenge in terms of the, what people don't know, what people don't realize about home. And I know we hear this a lot when we have these discussions uh, around peers and just not knowing what you're up against. So is that part of what you're hoping to get the word out on? Um, as part of the HD platform, I'm curious how you plan to, to go about that or ways that you're seeing that are really resonant patients who might be considering making the decision. So one of the things that we worked on, and I, I started to talking to other organizations, groups, and, and industry about this about, well, right after the AKH, AKH uh, was announced and launched in 2019. And that is the fact that we need to have um, 
not just better training facilities, but we need to basically overhaul how we're training patients. And by that, I mean looking to the future, which we were really excited last year at the very end of the year. We've really been working with CMS to talk about changes that are needed. You know, they want to see patients go home. We want to see patients go home. But guess what? The regulations governing home dialysis were written in the 80s for clinics. So we, you, you have, you know, a, a conflict right there. So I, what we're hoping is that we can eventually rewrite or update the changes, the conditions for coverage to reflect better clinic certification for home. Now, why this is important is because it, in the pipe, we have five to seven new machines in the pipeline that could en potentially be entering the U.S. marketplace in the next couple of years. And you and I both know it's going to be really hard to get those machines to the patient. And, and my go job as part of at, at HDU was to say, this is important. This is critically important. Every patient needs to have the choice in not just going home, but in their dialysis and the type of dialysis they choose to receive. High flow, you know, uh, different uh, blood uh, dialysate solutions, whatever. And it, no one machine is perfect for any patient. So along with that is how are we going to train the patients on any all these different machines are you expecting one clinician to know this uh, we don't see that so like one of our goals with these changes would be to allow essentially the, you know take out the clinic but as the middleman and allow you know uh, prescribing different dialysis across the board and that would allow for training by the manufacturer um, through maybe a video, we have so many that just like your you know company, so many new means of educating people today. We do not have to have a one to one nurse patient ratio for every home patient. It's it, it, it's not practical, and you know it's not even if that nurse isn't properly trained, <laughs> you're not going to have good training anyway. So we need to have some quality. We need to have consistency. Um, you know, and every machine manufacturer should basically be responsible for providing the education for their machine. Um, and then that leaves the nurse free to really focus with the patient on those nuances we spoke about. Let's talk about your fistula. Let's get it working right. Let's, you know, get you understanding how it works. Let's talk about some of those side effects of dialysis. What can we do about it? You know, is the blood flow too fast? You know, are we taking too much fluid? All of these things should be, that's what the nurse needs to have time to discuss. You know, operating the machine, I mean, when I first started the home dialysis, the, I think the one Im thing that was the most impactful, I asked a technician, I said, well, what got you into this? And she said, oh, I was operating heavy, heavy equipment before this. And now I, <laughs> she was one of the top cannulators. So I thought, well, you shoot, if she can run a backhoe, you know, then she certainly she can work in a dialysis clinic, duh, then I can too. <laughs> I believe it. Having seen some of those machines up close, they, they are not easy. I think that last point too is to your people, not algorithms platform. That's those conversations have to be front and center. So, Hilch, as I'm thinking about the last couple of minutes here, I just want to get your take on what you're most optimistic about when it comes to innovation for home dialyzers community at large. So, it, and this could be anything from policy decisions to technologies or, or what have you. What is it that in your mind you think? Hey, we just had this big piece of legislation pass this executive order. This is what's next. This is what I hope to see happen in the next, let's say, the next year. So in 2022, and then I'm curious about over the next decade as you think about the rest of your decade of home dialysis on those two time frames. Where are you excited? I'm incredibly encouraged by how much CMS is really interested in learning about not dialysis in general, home dialysis in particular. Uh, we've had numerous conversations and meetings across all spectrums and with many different organizations, and they've been nothing but receptive. Um, it, it's really hard to understand if you're not living it every day. And so we understand that they have regulations they have to have and that they have to have, you know, that, that the monetary, the budget for dialysis is literally spiraling out of control. Um, we need them to understand what it is we need at home to, because that's our niche, is to, to really, you know, 
be successful and keep patients going home and staying home. Uh, so that's that's key. The thing that truly excites me and has from day one is the innovation that we're seeing. Um, and it's kind of, you know, a mixed blessing. I, we have these support groups, and unfortunately, patients who've been doing this 20, 30, and 40 years, they seriously, they don't have hope because they've not seen any significant change in 50 years in dialysis. But in the eight years that I've been in this arena, I have seen incredible changes. I mean, just a few years ago, I uh, did an inventory of over 16 new devices that were in the pipeline, and there are more now. We're gonna have five, as I said, five to seven new dialysis machines, including the ones that are already on the market, in the next two to five years. Um, and so that, that truly excites me because it's about patient choice. And so that's, one, that's the biggest thing I think that Home Dialyzers is truly trying to, to fight for is the choice for patients that we all have, not just the choice to go home, but the choice to do our dialysis at home in the best way possible for us. Thank you so much. And last one here, I wanted to, if someone out there wants to connect with you, learn more about you, your work at HDU, connect with your community. And this includes clinicians, patients, care partners, and all kinds of industry leaders. So I know um, part of our audience, how can they connect? What's the best way to say that? So we have a, uh, a robust website, homedialyzersunited.org. Just always remember, dialyzer is with an O. It is a dialyzer that you use during the dialysis. So it's home dialyzers with an O dot org. Um, and you can contact any one of us, any board member. Um, it was kind of ironic, we did a quick inventory of our, all of our activities last year with the board and myself. It was over four pages long between writing, speaking engagements, interviews, you name it. And so we're incredibly active for the clinicians, for patients um, out there spreading the word in any way we can. Thank you so much, Tim. It's so always great to see you. <laughs> always good to see you too. I'm so happy to catch up and I'll make sure that we put all the information about HD in the show notes so people have a good time saying hello and getting a hold of you. Thank you again, Tim, for coming. Thank you. Have a great day. Soon.